everybody, it's Gray again from Heck Yeah, You Can Cook. And today we're going to make my chicken, a Sazon chicken with apple and kale. It's a dish that I kind of created and my wife liked it a whole lot. So we're going to put it out here for everyone. Uh, it's very colorful, very flavorful and hope you enjoy it. While I've got everybody's attention, please like, share and subscribe. We love getting new people on the channel every day. And remember, every time we get 50 new subscribers, we give away an apron. So don't miss out on your chance. Today's tools that you're going to need, you're going to need an oven heated to 350 degrees. You can go to 375. I'm using the roast setting right now, so we're preheating that as we speak. You're going to need a couple of knives. You're going to need your nice fillet knife and, of course, a nice kitchen knife. Both of these are my Cutco brand. You're going to need a, a rice cooker or a saucepan to cook some rice in because this is the dish we are going to serve on rice. I've got my four-quart casserole here. We're going to be That's using that. I've got my probe thermometer here because we're going to let this cook in the oven and the timer goes off, we're going to know we're finished. And we're today's on. ingredients, now I've got uh, two whole chicken breasts here. These are the skinless, boneless. Um, we're going to be slicing these up. You can make this recipe with two chicken breasts, you can make it with three, you can make it with up to six. Uh, it kind of depends on uh, how many people you're feeding and this recipe will adjust to that. Family. Um, I'm making We're going to need some Sazon seasoning. This is the star of the show. You need the tropical one. It's bright orange. Got the orange lid. You can find this in your uh, grocer. Uh, Body it makes wonderful products. It's usually in their international section. This is all this stuff you need. This has salt. This is all the spices you need. You will not need anything else as far as spices go. For my um, rice, I have got a tablespoon of uh, butter and I've got my cup of rice and for the secret to making great rice use vegetable God, stock you require two and a half cups of it right here makes wonderful rice you can reduce that if you want because you're using the vegetable stock you don't have to add any salt so we're gonna get that going after we get the chicken prepped here today I've got 10 ounces of carrots then these are the pre-washed baby carrots um, already these are great to work with. You buy them in the bag and they're ready to go. And usually I don't show you chopping, but this is very important, the thickness that you chop with this so it gets cooked all the way through. So I want to make sure I showed you that today. I've got one shallot here and the same thing. We're going to show you how we chop this shallot and make it the right size. And I've got two red delicious apples. You can use any type of red apple that you would like. And we're going to be adding this to the dish. This adds a wonderful tartness and color to the dish and just makes a, a unique flavor blend. Now I have gotten, and hopefully I say this correctly, one bunch of Lacinato kale. This is the darker green. You may have seen this called black cabbage. This is a kale variety. You can use regular kale, but the dark green here, almost black, uh, makes this dish really set out with the colors and it adds so much flavor. And that's why I'm using that today. Now to get things started, the first thing you want to do, you want to get your rice started because it's going to take 45 minutes because I'm using a, a royal blend, which is a, a longer cooking rice. I like that for this dish. Besides your baking on here, so you don't need it done in 15 minutes. Okay, everybody, we're back. Uh, we've got the rice going. We're going to keep our ear out open for it. We hear it boil, put the lid on and let it sit for 45 minutes. Now with the shallot today, I always like to use a shallot with this. It just adds a little bit of a better flavor. You want this to be very small. It's also going to help release the flavor and the oils from the shallot. Run your blade back through, wipe it off, get any more pieces. So this is finely chopped. Notice that I don't look up too much because I don't want to finely chop my finger. Set that aside, using just a little bit. Now, I may have forgotten to mention this ingredient. I've got about two and a half, three tablespoons of olive oil here. We're going to use this as a finishing agent on the dish and make sure you have your olive oil. You can use grape seeds, you can use avocado. I just like olive oil for this dish because it works, seems to work better with the kale. Next, we're going to take care of the apples. A little bowl over here. Now, the apples you make a little bit bigger. You're not going to dice them down. Usually, like I said, I don't show it. I'm going to show you this. We're just going to cut the, around the core. And with this piece of apple right here, I just cut it into fourths and then cut it into thirds. Fourth and thirds, and there you go. Fourths, turn it, thirds. All right, now we got our apples ready. Put them aside. Next comes the carrots. Pour them out. The carrots have to be thinly sliced, okay? Now, the best way I can say is 
for those of you in the European metric, you want a centimeter. You want them very thinly sliced. You really don't want to uh, make the dish have crunchy carrots. So it's, a, it's a very, very thin, one centimeter thick. A little bit thicker than a quarter. So next, we're going to prepare our kale. Now the kale is really, what I like is these stems are so thin. This is a really good bunch of kale. If your stems are more thicker than your finger, you probably want it more thicker. Oh, every English teacher I just had did a flip. If the stem of the kale is thicker than your finger, you probably want to cut it out. If not, this is very thin. This is not even half the thickness of my finger. We're going to leave it in. It adds so much more flavor and it holds that leaf together while this is cooking. Now I take my knife. Take off the hard ends, the very bottom. This is a pretty good piece. It was only about an inch. Then I just go across. You see how it just breaks apart these wonderful pieces. Just put them in the bottom of the dish. See how pretty it looks. You can see how the colors are already working together. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of fun to do. Now, I'll bring this up here onto the bowl, a board. I'm having trouble with my words today. And now we get our Sazon seasoning. Now, the reason I didn't tell you how much to put on is because it depends on just how it feels. I usually probably use about two or three tablespoons while I'm making this. Um, that's why I like the shaker top. That's why it comes with a shaker top. Make sure you have good soap available too, because after you handle this when you rub into the chicken, your fingers will be orange. You got to make sure you have a good scrub down coming. So what I do is I take this right now and I have it ready, and I take about three quarters of the shallots, not all of it, because we're going to put some of that directly on top of the chicken. Sprinkle it on. Sprinkle through the carrots. Kind of work those in. And the same for the apples. And like the uh, shallots, you're going to leave just a little bit of the apple. Because we're going to put a few of the pieces directly on top of the meat as it cooks. Just kind of work that around. Ta-da! Now, take your seasoning, your Sazon Tropical from Badia, and just go across the top. One way I can imagine telling you this, and I'll put it like this so I'll do a close-up later, is, you know when it sleeps, and how it first looks when it sleeps, just that initial covering, kind of how you want it to have on there. Now take some of the olive oil and lightly drizzle across the leaves. Just under half of it. I always have a paper towel handy. There we go. Now we're going to prepare the meat. Now what I like to do with the meat is you simply take it, cut it right down the middle. All right. And now we've got four servings. And I kind of do a like a light angle here. Cut these in half. Now you have the servings for eight. Now I take these pieces right here. And what I like to do here is because this Stazon seasoning does get everywhere, I kind of go ahead and set it down in there. Now when I set it in there, I'll take and lightly score only one side. I usually put a split down the middle of each one. And that's just so some of the seasoning and some of the oil can get in there. Now I only do this to one. We're going to flip it and flip it again. So after you put the slit in, turn them over. You'll see the seasoning's already picked up some of it. Now in this case, you're really adding a full coat. So it's sort of like after you get about a half an inch of snow and sleet. If you have a side like this, turn over and there's two sides of every story and repeat. Once again, just like it's that first half inch of snow, the coverage you want. Now you remember the rest of the olive oil? Drizzle that on top. The 
apple. I'm going to place some of them across the top. Now, notice you didn't oil these. I really kind of want these to really crisp, and I want them to kind of force their flavor down. So that's why I didn't oil this part. And the onion. I mean, excuse me, the scallion. You could use onion if you want. I just like that scallion okay, flavor. everybody. Now that you've washed your hands and cleaned up, probe thermometer. I love mine because it's for stupid people. There's a picture of a chicken on it, and I just put the picture of the chicken, and I know that the chicken will be done. We're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna set it into one of our thicker pieces, which I like right here. We'll set this in the oven and we'll come back and show you what it looks like when it hits 165 degrees. Make sure you hit that 165 mark and then we'll show us taking the chicken off and then rehydrating the greens because they will dry out with that hot uh, juices and oil. We'll perk them right back up. Thanks everyone. The thermometer has gone off. There she is, folks got your chicken you've got your greens what I do right now is take a plate of some tongs move the onions and the potato uh, not onions but the, look how pretty that chicken is folks I right, get the chicken off and set aside there you go folks we're gonna set that aside and now here comes the important part you stir these greens Get them from being crispy, some of them, to being rehydrated. Now, you remember that bed of rice you made? Take some of the carrots. Remember the rice you made? Now, you made a bed with the rice. Take a piece of that chicken. Nestle it on there. And maybe somebody wants to. There you go, folks. A little bit of the kale and apples on top. Look how pretty that is, everybody. All right, this I'm gonna name this one after my wife. I hadn't done that yeah, yet. So this is Llewellyn's Llewellyn's baked chicken special. Everyone have a great day.